You heard Rob Portman talk about the Senate battle over COVID-19 relief. The debate is also raging on in the U.S. House. I talked with Democrat Joyce Beatty and Republican Steve Stivers. We have been doing everything we can because we know this is about health and safety. We also know that we had to put funds into a piece of legislation to take care of our state and local government workers, to take care of our essential workers, those who are cleaning deals, those who are union workers out there every day. But we also know that people are hurting. So we made sure that there were dollars in there again for a stimulus packet, again for those families with children to be able to have dollars because it is about, yes, making sure that people are able to continue with their lives during this pandemic time. The unfortunate thing is, Colleen, we don't know how long this is going to be. So we have a responsibility to fight for the people and to put funds in there. There's a lot at stake. 11.1% of Americans are unemployed. Uh, and a lot of people need help out there. So. And Stiver says unemployment for female veterans during the pandemic is at 20%. So he pushed through an amendment to study the reasons why this week as part of the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, that's a big deal. And, you know, we want to make sure that our female veterans get a chance to, uh, to get jobs. And, and another amendment that we had uh, deals with chronically homeless veterans. Um, many of those have other than honorable discharges, uh, but we need to make sure that those people uh, that even had other than honorable discharges don't become homeless forever just because they made a mistake in their military career. The jobless crisis for all Americans is expected to get worse. Just this week, L Brands laid off 850 people at its Central Ohio headquarters. It's the reason federal supplemental unemployment support was viewed as vital, with Beatty dismissing Republican concerns that $600 a week was too high. For them to say 600 is too much and people won't go back to work, people hit the lottery every day and don't quit their jobs. And this is something that's needed for them to do it, to be able to pay their bills. That's why we have legislation that is not allowing people to be evicted. That's why we have forbearance with mortgages. That's why we're not letting cars be repossessed or for them to start that process because people need to be able to pay their bills and many individuals are not able to go back to work because their place of employment is not fully opened or fully up to scale. We see Republicans and Democrats in stark different places on all of these major issues and it looks as if no one wants to compromise. Doesn't someone have to give an inch to maybe save the mile? Well, I think we have uh, made some compromises. If you look at the dollars that originally we wanted to give to individuals and families, it was $2,000, and now we're at $1,200. When you look at many of the things that we thought we needed, it was $3 trillion. Uh, and that's because it was based on need, not someone picking a number out of the sky and saying it's one million dollars, one trillion dollars, and not having any justification for it. We make compromises every day. We have little children who need to be educated. Certainly, it would cost more money than what we're talking about to do it, but we are trying to be reasonable within the finances to get us through this pandemic and to make sure that we are fighting for the people. I'll ask you something that I asked Congresswoman Beatty, which is that neither the Republicans nor the Democrats seem to be bent on compromise. Isn't this a time where somebody's got to blink? Well, I hope that uh, everybody comes together on a compromise, but uh, somebody needs to, uh, uh, needs to be the first to say, I'm willing to give something. Uh, and I, you know, frankly, uh, you know, I hope that uh, somebody shows some real leadership here because we have 11.1 million people unemployed. We have people suffering from a pandemic. We're working toward a vaccine. The, the testing is still not where any of us want to be. Um, and uh, we're trying to, um, you know, figure out what to do with getting schools, getting our kids educated, uh, getting people back to work. But 
there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Next, our All-Star Roundtable takes a closer look at who's to blame for the turmoil in the